riperile di madekwana sanbonani molweni lochani it has been five months since we declared a national state of disaster to combat the coronavirus pandemic. As I said then, and as I repeat now, never before in the history of our democracy has our country been confronted with such a severe threat, a situation that has demanded an extraordinary response and much sacrifice. It has been an immensely difficult five months, and the pandemic has taken a heavy toll on the health of our people, on families and communities, on the public health system, on the economy, and on people's daily, everyday lives. During this difficult period, what all of us have longed for as South Africans, most of all, is to be healthy, restore our livelihoods, and rebuild our economy. I address you this evening amid signs of hope. We are making progress in our fight against COVID-19 on a number of fronts. Over the last three weeks, the number of new confirmed cases has dropped from a peak of over 12,000 a day to an average of over the past week of around 5,000 a day. The recovery rate from coronavirus has risen from 48% at the time of my last address to the nation and now stands at an incredible 80%. The cumulative number of cases in our country remains extremely high, though, at 583,653. However, the number of active cases is declining every day and now stands at around 105,000. The virus appears to have peaked in several provinces, including the Western Cape, where it was highest, the Eastern Cape, where it kept rising, and Gauteng, where it was alarmingly going up, and possibly in KwaZulu-Natal as well. Fewer people are presenting with symptoms at our health facilities. We are also finding that fewer people are requiring admission in our hospitals, and the demand for coronavirus tests has dropped. The number of patients hospitalized has decreased from 10,000 at the beginning of the month to around 4,000. This is significantly reducing the pressure on our health facilities. You will recall that we started building field hospitals now, many of those field hospitals now have empty bed space. As of today, 11,667 people are confirmed to have died from COVID-19 in South Africa. We continue to mourn each and every one who has passed away and the many more that we do not yet have any knowledge about. The deaths of so many people in such a short space of time due to a virus such as this is a human tragedy of proportions that we would not have expected to befall our nation at a time of peace and democracy. It is now clear that had we not acted as swiftly and as decisively as we did, and had we not taken the threat as seriously as we did, far more lives would have been lost. It remains our foremost concern in the weeks and months that lie ahead to continue to save lives. When I announced the nationwide lockdown on the 23rd of March, 
It was to prevent a sudden and uncontrolled surge of infections and to prepare our health system adequately. As we look back at the past five months, all indications are that South Africa has reached the peak and moved beyond the inflection point of the curve. Most of our health facilities have proven resilient, they've proven that they are capable, and that they are able to withstand and deal with the surge. The modeled projections that were put forward by a number of modelers with regard to infections, hospitalizations, and deaths have had to be adjusted downwards as we have recorded better progress in the management of the disease. The progress we are recording in our management of COVID-19 would not be possible without the dedication and professionalism of our doctors, our nurses, and other health professionals who have had to confront this unprecedented disease often under extremely difficult conditions. We pay tribute to them, many of whom have been infected in the line of duty, and some who have lost their lives taking care of others in our country. We will forever remember the contribution that they have made and continue to make. None of this would have been possible without all other frontline workers, police women and men, soldiers, traffic officials, as well as the volunteers who have given their time, their energy and their resources, and who have been at the forefront of our national response. And we also say thank you to them. We also pay tribute to our medical experts in various health institutions, such as the National Health Laboratory Service, the National Institute of Communicable Diseases, Medical Research Council, and the Ministerial Advisory Committee, who continue to play an invaluable role in our management of COVID-19. Ultimately, the progress we've made would not have been possible without the sacrifices made by you, the people of our country. It is you who have readily adapted to the restrictions around mask wearing, social distancing, good hygiene, in the process you've helped to save lives. But while there are indeed signs of hope we cannot and must not let our guard down. As we continue to ease restrictions, the risk of infection does not diminish. In fact, the risk of infection becomes even greater as more people return to work, as they move about more and more, and as there are more opportunities for our people to interact with each other. We therefore cannot become complacent or abandon the health precautions that we know we need to take to save our lives as well as the lives of others. Even the slightest lasp in our alertness at this moment could lead to a resurgence in infections at a rate and on a scale far greater than what we have seen so far. We have seen this happen in other countries where stringent restrictions have had to be reimposed at short notice as the rate of infection rises after they have relaxed the earlier restrictions. We need to avoid this. We have concluded that the lower rate of infections we are experiencing should lead to the relaxation of the restrictions we have had thus far. However, now is the time for even greater vigilance and even greater care. We must all continue to wear a 
cloth mask, a mask that covers our nose and mouth every time we leave home. We must protect the elderly and those with underlying conditions from exposure to the virus. We must continue to practice social distancing and ensure proper ventilation in closed environments. We must continue to limit our travel only that which is absolutely necessary, to avoid social gatherings and to remember to regularly wash our hands and to sanitize them. We now know that a large proportion of people who are infected with the virus do not show the symptoms and may not even know that they are infected. I could be infected as you could. With this in mind, each one of us should consider ourselves as potentially infected with the virus and continue to behave responsibly so that we do not pass it on to others. I know that the last five months have been extraordinarily difficult for our nation and for each one of us. For everyone, this disease has meant the disruption of our daily lives. But for millions of people, it has also meant hardship and hunger. It has caused pain, anxiety, and despair that no person should ever have to endure. It has also required a careful balance between saving lives and protecting livelihoods, between a devastating epidemic and a deep recession. It has required difficult choices with far-reaching consequences. While the measures we have taken have resulted in great hardship, we know that the alternative of an uncontrolled surge of infections and a health system unable to cope would have been even more devastating. Now, amidst the signs of hope, we are ready to enter a new phase in our response to the pandemic. Due to the actions that we have taken collectively and individually over the last few months, we have reduced the rate of transmission. We have relieved much of the pressure on our health system and guided by the advice of our health experts in the Medical Advisory Committee and after consultation with provincial and local government, Cabinet has decided to place the entire country on alert level two with effect from midnight on Monday, the 17th of August, 2020. Alert level two in terms of our risk-adjusted strategy in dealing with the pandemic means that there is moderate COVID-19 spread of the virus with a relatively high health system readiness. The move to level two means that we can remove nearly all of the restrictions on the resumption of economic activity across most industries. Economic activity will be allowed with the necessary and appropriate stringent health protocols and safety precautions in place. Therefore, the following changes will take place with effect from under level two. All restrictions on interprovincial travel will be lifted, accommodation, Hospitality venues and tours will be permitted according to approved protocols to ensure social distancing. Restaurants, bars, and taverns will be permitted to operate according to approved protocols as to times of operation and numbers of people. Restrictions on the sale of tobacco will be lifted. The suspension of the sale of alcohol will be lifted subject to certain restrictions. 
alcohol will be permitted for on-site consumption in licensed establishments only up to 10 p.m. Liquor outlets will be allowed to sell alcohol for off-site consumption from Monday to Thursday during the hours of 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. only. Restrictions on family and social visits will also be lifted, although everyone is urged to exercise extreme caution and undertake such visits that are absolutely necessary. Infections have been known to take place during family visits, endangering family members, and sometimes leading to the deaths of some of family members. And it is for this reason that we say we should be cautious. Social distancing should be observed, masks should continue to be worn, and special care should also be taken to protect the elderly and people with underlying conditions. Familiarity with each other should not allow us to forget these precautions. As we ease restrictions, it is necessary that some measures remain in place to limit transmission and protect our health capacity. Therefore, current restrictions on international travel will remain in place. No gatherings of more than 50 people will be permitted. Among others, this includes funerals and religious events. Spectators will not be permitted at sporting events. The curfew will remain in place between the hours of 10 p.m. and 4 a.m. We continue to encourage people to stay at home if they can and if possible to continue to work from home, especially if they are over the age of 60 or have underlying conditions. In order to keep the remaining restrictions in place and to maintain some of the essential elements of our health response, it is necessary that we extend the national state of disaster once again until the 15th of September 2020. With this new phase of our response, we need to put in place the practices and forms of behavior that we must continue to adopt for some time to come. This virus will remain with us for many months, and I must applaud many South Africans who have changed their way of life to meet this reality. I must also make mention, in particular, of the contribution of traditional leaders and religious leaders of all faiths who have provided a great deal of guidance on how religious and cultural observations, observances rather, can be adjusted during the time of coronavirus. We welcome the role of community structures across the country that are promoting awareness around the disease and mobilizing people to take action to prevent the spread of the virus. These community structures include sporting organizations, political parties. I've seen political party leaders urging various supporters and our people to change their behavior, and we thank them for that. Trade unions have also embarked on massive campaigns to get members and other people to change behavior, we thank them. Even Stockfells, burial societies, a number of them have been at the leading edge of getting their member societies to change. Women's organizations have also been leading the charge. Small business formations, civic organizations, including youth organizations. We are grateful that all these community-based structures have joined 
the fight against COVID-19. It is through this work that our response to the virus will have its greatest effect. Alongside basic precautions that all of us can take, we're improving public health capacity so that we can better identify, isolate, test, and treat every positive case and trace and quarantine every contact. In the coming days, we will announce a powerful new tool to support our digital contact tracing efforts. In addition to manual contact tracing and the national WhatsApp channel, a mobile application will be used to notify contacts more quickly while preserving their privacy and anonymity. <clears throat> the Minister of Health, acting on behalf of our government, requested the Director General of the World Health Organization, Dr. Tedros Ghebreyesus, to send experts to South Africa to bolster our efforts against the virus. We deeply welcome the support from the WHO, which has brought 43 experts to South Africa to assist our hard-working health professionals to help us fight this epidemic. They are already providing help with regard to various analyses, infection control, incident management, and community engagement. We must continue to minimize the risk of outbreaks in high vulnerability settings, particularly in homes for older people, in mental health facilities, and other institutions. We will also strengthen our efforts to ensure and enforce health and safety measures in the workplace, in retail stores, public transport, to protect workers and commuters, and create a safe environment for businesses to operate. While this crisis has brought us together as a nation, united against a common threat, it has also brought out some of the worst tendencies in our society. We have witnessed the actions of some individuals who have sought to profit through corrupt means from this pandemic. We are taking decisive action to stop this and bring those responsible to book, and we will regularly update the nation on the progress that we are making transparently. We continue to grapple with the pandemic of violence against women. We are proceeding with the work to strengthen the response of the criminal justice system to provide better support to survivors of gender-based violence and femicide, and most importantly, to intensify all prevention measures. Following the measures we've put in place as part of the 500 billion social economic relief package, we continue to engage with our social partners in business and labor on how to sustain and improve the support being provided to companies, to workers, and to households. The further easing of restrictions presents us with the greatest opportunity since the start of the pandemic to breathe life into our struggling economy. Even as we open up economic activity, it will take a long time for industries and businesses to recover, and there is much work still to be done. On Thursday, I convened all the social partners in NEDLEC, namely government, labor, business, and community-based organizations. We are now working together on an urgent economic recovery program that places the protection and creation of employment at its center, focusing on infrastructure and a number of other sectors of our economy. We will be making announcements on the outcome of this work in the next few weeks. We will use this moment not only to return South Africa to where it was before, but 
to transform our country to a more equal, more just, and more dynamic economy. Difficult days still lie ahead. However, we have proven our resilience as a nation over the past five months. The task before us now is to apply the same energies with which we have battled this pandemic to the economic recovery effort. We are weathering a long and difficult storm. We are enduring great hardship and suffering that is unbearable. But we continue to stand firm against this onslaught. We have taken action to protect ourselves, our communities, and our country, much as we have lost some amongst us through the virus. A ray of light is visible now on the horizon. Let us continue to exercise the greatest caution and care and remain ever vigilant. Let us continue to stand united in our determination to defeat this virus. Let us press forward, fellow South Africans, as one nation, resolute, hopeful, brave, and courageous. This is the time when we want to say, Morena, Ubuluke si chavasa heisu, O si katekisa Africa zonga. May God bless South Africa and protect her people. I thank you.